pick up a fork and take a juicy bite, oblivious to the global ramifications of our food supply. Our, our beef comes from Iowa, fed by corn from Nebraska. Our bananas come from Honduras. Our olive oil comes from Sicily. <laughs> our apple juice comes, not from Washington State, but all the way across the world to China. And yet, in six of the last 11 years, we have consumed more food than we have produced. This does not sound sustainable to me. Actually, where's, where's my slides? <laughs> Any slides? Testing, one, two, three. Don't make me late for lunch. <laughs> okay, thank you. In this era of tightening world food supplies, the ability to grow food is fast becoming a new form of geopolitical leverage. Food is the new oil, land is the new gold. Now, Lester uh, is a little bit of an alarmist. The planet's not quite full yet, but there are a number of empty plates. If the world were one big dinner table and we had to set the extra plate for the new population growth today, we'd have to set another 219,000 plates. That's 219,000 today, 219,000 new plates tomorrow, the day after, the day after that for the foreseeable future. The, uh, that's the equivalent of one new Britain every year. Now, <clears throat> if we were to conservatively estimate how much land we would need to fulfill that 219,000 plates, let's assume that most of this population growth is coming from Asia and assume further that they're only eating rice, just 1,200 calories a day. Now, rice happens to be a, a very high energy, high calorie crop per acre, about 18,350 calories per day. If we again assume that 1,200 calories per day, which by the way is the equivalent of about uh, one Big Mac meal at McDonald's without dessert, that, uh, that, that would feed, at uh, one acre would feed about 15 people. And if you divide that by the 219,000, we need an extra 14,600 acres per day. Again, today, tomorrow, the day after, the day after that. No taking off for weekends or holidays. If you look at the Chinese word for population, it's a, it's a combination of two symbols. One is a character for a person, the other is a character for an open mouth. So here again, you can see that that rice down at the bottom oops, is a very high um, energy crop, a lot of calories per acre, or per hectare too. But when you look at rising incomes, we start to have people go after beef and chicken and other higher um, calorie crops. So if we were to further do this math and assume that higher incomes lead to higher quality diets, greater diversity, more meats, we have to have more acreage. Um, when we factor in that crops are used for things other than just food, cooking oils, biofuels, et cetera, and, and in the, the rising demand for organic production, which has a lower uh, yield. If you were to factor all this in, you now find that we need over 100,000 new acres per day, every day, today, tomorrow, the day after that. The problem is that the yields are not increasing. There's only two ways to increase that food supply, either more land or higher yield. You can see that during the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, yields were increasing, but now they're flattening off. Now, some of that could be attributed to the recent droughts, but the trends are pretty clear. Um, <clears throat> the uh, China, during the, the decade of the 60s, was growing about 3.1% a year in yield increase. In the first decade of this century, it's down to less than 1% a year. The, uh, the existing technologies are not able to increase the demand of the supply enough to meet the demand. Not a judgment call, just the numbers. Sometime in the next few years, we're going to have very serious shortages of food everywhere in the world and prices are going to go through the roof. As Jim Rogers, a noted investor, author, I was with him a couple of weeks ago. He made it extremely clear his position on agriculture. He actually told well, investors to invest in agriculture. He told MBA students to drop out of Ivy League schools and go buy a farm. 
He said, if you had any other business, find a way to sell to farmers. Or as he put it, the, the people in the future that will be buying the Lamborghinis are the Iowa corn farmers. And that's all based on the current world food shortage. Well, how bad is it? These are the riots, headlines from riots that were uh, occurring back in 2008 around the world. The, um, Asia, Britain, Australia, and even U.S. food riots much closer than you think. Now again, these were riots based on the price of food rising. Here's the U.N. Uh, price food index, which you can see from 2004 has nearly doubled. And when the price goes up, look at all the riots that occur. When it gets up there, 210, 220 on the food price index, you start to have a lot of riots. Last month, the index was at 210. That was after falling three months in a row. So that was 2008. Uh, this was 2011. Are we headed toward a food shortage? Yes. Food prices expected to skyrocket. Food riots. How many of you saw this headline? Obama orders military to prepare for spring food riots. Now, even in countries where Oil is cheap, food is expensive. Living in the U.S., we have a somewhat distorted view of how much people spend on food because we have such a low percentage. If you can't read that, that's 6.6% of the household income of the U.S. is spent on food. And across the country, even in, in Europe, it goes much higher. But you look at some of these other places, at 20s percents, 30s percents, up into the 40s. So if there's a slight increase in the cost of food, it has a dramatic impact on people around the world. There have been riots now in 61 countries based on the price of food. The next riots will be based on the unavailable, unavailability of food. And that's even uh, not counting the people that eat food that are chronically undernourished. Some places it's already reached a crisis point. Um, in the case of food, the world remains only one or two bad harvests away from another global crisis. Are any of you aware of what's going on in North Korea right now? Up to 10,000 people fear dead after a famine in farming provinces, not even in the cities, in the farming provinces. Cannibalism, reports of men digging up corpses. How hungry do you have to be to dig up a corpse for dinner? even murdering your own children after being driven mad by hunger. We have a crisis, not trying to be alarmist, just commenting. And then when there is food, the food itself, the quality is deteriorating, taste and nutrition. Um, here's some quotes that I can't believe people actually got quoted on. Um, as one large farmer, one large Florida farmer said, I don't get paid a single cent for flavor. We have been breeding for yield, 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 so that flavor has been going out of our crops. Nutrition has been going out of our crops. In fact, the, uh, uh, here's another quote, almost single-minded focus on increasing yields created a blind spot in nutritional content. Um, the, uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, there is no such thing as a free lunch. But don't worry, lunch is included with your admission ticket. And for those of you worried that I'm going to speak too long, we're not missing lunch. Um, but uh, look at some of these charts on the nutrition in, in common crops, how much it's declined from 1950 through uh, 1999. This is a cantaloupe, 24%, 37% up to 69%, 70% declines. Yellow corn, up to 75% declines. Eggplant, honeydew melons, we could go on. It doesn't really matter which, which uh, produce you're looking at. Uh, the nutrients in the, in the crops that we eat have been declining. Um, conventional fertilizer, petrochemical-based fertilizer is simply unsustainable. Um, can cause air pollution, destroy the soil. 